So first off, kind of a huge situation happening across the globe right now. And, you know, if if you were to explain it to someone who's in fifth grade, how would you go about explaining what we're looking at right now? So what transpired is one of the security company that has an excellent reputation called CrowdStrike released a patch, released a modification to their software package. And this particular modification impacted computers that are running Windows operating system, which is a Microsoft product, mm -hmm. or running some additional Windows applications that could impact email productivity, such as Microsoft Word and some other feature set. As a result of this particular patch, any computer system that has either CrowdStrike, Falcon technology, and Microsoft uh, operating system is being impacted by this particular change to the software code. So what transpired is that to the layman, they are not sure if the computer itself is not working or if it's the operating system or if it's an application. So it generates a multiple layer of complexities for end users to figure out where the source of this issue is. So because it is running on Microsoft platform, obviously Microsoft feels responsible to try to respond uh, to this problem, as well as CrowdStrike obviously is looking to fix this issue uh, by either releasing an additional patch to fix this or find a way to, to basically revert back to the earlier version of their application. Yeah, a lot of blue screens of death across the globe today. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, when it comes to my, my big question, when I heard about this all happening is, you know, why put all of your eggs in the in one basket when it comes to the hardware you're using or the software you're using? There is an answer. How would you respond to that question? That's actually an excellent question. So majority of organizations uh, select technologies based on three factors. Uh, one factor is basically cost. Second factor is functionalities. Third factor is availability of technical resources either inside their organization or outside to support it. So, and many of them would argue that going with the best of breeds of picking a Microsoft operating system with Falcon CrowdStrike and possibly some additional platform is the way to go. Uh, some other organizations saying, look, we don't mind paying the extra money, but as long as we have a single company that there's not gonna be any finger pointing. So really the appetite you know, varies from one organization to another, and it's a vast uh, area. So you can really say, uh, for example, this particular platform is not a good platform. It has been very successful. Uh, it has worked. On the other hand, uh, if the platform was running entirely Microsoft antivirus or Microsoft uh, a program that was going to prevent malware attack versus using CrowdStrike, uh, this particular episode would not have happened because you only have a single vendor to point to. So even figuring out where the problem has started generally takes time because uh, vendors have a tendency to sort of look at other vendors first, see if there's a problem with their product. So this kind of it was a unique situation that really involved one particular platform that kind of propagated to any device that was running uh, this particular um, application from you know CrowdStrike called Falcon. This is just so fascinating. I mean, in, in the way that, you know, it was described to me by by your colleague as being kind of like a vaccine in the way that, you know, when the computer does the virus scan, it's looking for a bunch of preset uh, vulnerabilities. A new vulnerability was added to be started to look for, and that also had some, some kind of uh, issue with it as well. But my, go on. No, go. So actually, that's a good point. And, and we don't, they don't necessarily might tell what particular vulnerability it would address. Obviously, they, they have seen something or, or found something that they tried to address. Uh, and as a result, they came up with this particular code to fix or prevent that particular attack and, and intended consequences was generating uh, basically blue screen of death and other type of uh, issues that is now impacting a large number of users that have a combination of uh, Microsoft Windows operating system and CrowdStrike application. And so when it comes to, you know, the layman, you know, people who aren't running their own businesses, you know, this is impacting them as well. Uh, 
what can you what can you recommend in terms of trying to avoid this type of situation, whether that's diversification of, of hardware or redundancies? How do you think that the regular person should be able to fix this? So this is an excellent question. So for a typical layman that does not have the layer of uh, time or effort or energy for the layer of complexity, I would say it's easier to stick with a single vendor for many reasons, because if there's a problem, the vendor will work on it. Just they don't have to co collaborate or cooperate with another party. So for example, people who are running Microsoft antivirus on their devices, it's perfectly fine. That's the job. It's great. Defender is a good product and it works. So you don't, if there is a problem, you know that Microsoft owns it and they're going to fix it. Today, you have a collaboration now between Microsoft and CrowdStrike trying to figure out how this particular um, you know, solution or software is impacting Microsoft operating system. So it's really a, a two-pronged approach. You have both vendors now have to look at how this is actually impacting the host, which is Microsoft Windows. So it generates additional layer of complexity. For organizations that are small, I would say as much as possible, uh, have a single vendor, as much as say, well, we're putting all of the egg in one basket. The beauty of that is simplicity transparency and the fact that you can only have call one place say look i have a problem you guys need to fix it no finger pointing uh, no challenges you guys work together in a company to come up with a solution whereas when you have multiple solutions granted you get you know best of breed but then you come across situations like this so when it, so if i could so what you're saying is the best way to prevent it is you really can't. I mean, especially when you're using Absolutely. a product like CrowdStrike that's so highly revered, it's a good product in, in, in your words, but the best way to try to fix these issues is to make it as simple to fix it as possible. Correct. And many times for end, end node devices, which is your, your desktop, your laptop, your uh, computer that you use, it's generally a sound idea to have as many utilities and as many programs from the company that put the operating system on it. So for example, you have an Apple product, you'll get as many Apple product as you can on this device. You have a Samsung Android device, you, you put as many apps from Android that has been vetted by the company. You have a Windows computer, you use Microsoft Office, you use their antivirus to simplify, um, you know, basically support. This is especially important for folks that are using this sporadically, it's uh, it's not something that they have technical resources to support them on a regular basis. It just kind of keep it as simple and as sort of called, I would say, single platform as possible. So there really is no avoiding this situation. Unfortunately, not. I mean, it it, it could happen to any vendor at any time. This is obviously uh, something that they didn't anticipate. Maybe it was uh, done harshly. The unintended consequences are, of course, massive. And it's really two issues. One is loss of revenue. The second is fixing the problem. So first they have to fix the problem, and then they have to address the, the loss of revenue and, and across the board. Because airlines are canceled. Pharmacists can't fill prescriptions. I mean, it's just across the board. Every bank, financial institutions are impacted. So anyone that is actually having a Windows computer with this particular application could be vulnerable. One area where this could potentially be addressed is some organizations do not automatically uh, release a patch to their machine. What they do is that they create something called a sandbox, and then the, with, with the vendors release the code, they put it there, they test it, then they release it. The problem with that is twofold. One, it takes a lot of times and resources to do all the testing before releasing it. Two, in case the vulnerability is severe and a quick fix needs to be deployed, the delay could be detrimental and the company could be exposed. So that's part of the balancing act that many organizations are going through in terms of uh, whether they should release the patch through the whole organization and sort of deal with the unintended consequences, which is this, or actually go through a process of testing it through a, in a sandbox and then making a decision to release it. And that could be very timely just because of the fact that they have to test it against all their applications and see what's going on. And it's really rare. I mean, in the past uh, uh, probably 10 years, we have had two episodes of this. We had one area earlier and several years ago, and we have this product now. So it's really not a very common uh, practice or common things. Companies do a much, much better job today testing their products before releasing it. And uh, obviously, there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, questions that is going to be posed to CrowdStrike as, as to what transpired and what they're doing to remedy this.
So what you're saying is, you know, th there is a benefit to test it beforehand, but especially when it comes to a security concern, you want to roll that out as quickly as possible if you have Correct. identity ability. Absolutely. Also, it takes time and resources to really establish the lab and have people out dedicated because these patches, these uh, mo modifications or upgrades are coming uh, 100 miles an hour. They're coming just so many directions so fast. Uh, so many companies are releasing them because they see things in the market. And uh, so in a sense, it's it's difficult to do that, but that would be the, the safest way uh, to tackle this. But it's really not a practical approach in most organizations. Gotcha. Wow, this is fascinating. Such a great conversation. Um, I'm just trying to think, you know, in your, in your opinion, how big of an issue are we looking at or, you know? I believe we are basically reached the pinnacles. Now I think that it's, it's going to plateau and it's going to continue uh, to get better. The ripple effect started because a lot of machines may have been turned off and then as soon as they got online, they applied dispatch to it. So we feel the ripple effect is already, if you look at the bell curve shape, I believe we're already on the top of this pyramid and it's just going to start getting better. But also, if they release the patch, for example, now and they identify how to fix it, how long is it going to take to propagate through all the system? Uh, no one knows. Does it require these computers to get rebooted? That's another process. How long is it going to take? And how much comfortable, com you know, comfort organizations are going to have in the solution? That's going to be a whole different animal. And how many people are going to lose confidence in this company's ability um, to deliver, you know, solutions is clearly an option. Uh, I know that been a couple of my uh, colleagues are talking to me about some companies are looking at removing this product altogether, rolling back their computers to the earlier version and try to introduce uh, another solution. But that takes time to purchase, to install, to do rollback. I mean, it, it, it could be it could be hours. So, so the question is that would you wait for this company to come up with a solution with the help of Microsoft, or would you actually uh, decide to say, you know what, let's roll back a few previous versions from operating system and then introduce a new product into the mix um that that is a very tough question i you know if i was sitting in in a you know decision making this place i wouldn't know which direction to go just based on the size and the disruption that this could create if you want to roll back and reintroduce a different product and um when this when this problem happened how big of an issue was it um, initially, it started slow and it just got worse. And I, I think that the biggest impact is just, to, I think it took him time to identify the problem because the initial uh, news report, a lot of places, of folks thought there was a cyber attack. So many of the organizations approach to this problem was an external force causing this particular issue. But it really seems to me so far, based on all the, the articles, documents, and people in the business that we're talking to, it's not the case. It's something in within the app that had caused some problems. But they, I think we don't have all the facts right now. I believe more information will be made available by the company by, and by other sources. But uh, so the initial, so generally speaking, uh, the first uh, impression that everybody has whenever there's a glitch like that is that hey, there's an attack coming from outside. Let's go ahead and activate all of our, uh, uh, you know, things that we have done in terms of protection and, uh, uh, you know, coming out with mechanism to safeguard the important data and everything else. So all that plans kick in. But then if the product is internal, now you have a whole different uh, set of issues. You could get the guard down and let's start looking at how to fix this problem. So it's not as much of a security problem as a system administration problem. So, so even the team that are involved could potentially shift a little bit. But, but from what you are saying that this is a this it was a big problem absolutely it is because look at the impact is it's, it's profound i mean it is uh, we still don't have the full picture of all of it but why is it not impacting every organization across the country given the number of windows computers it's very simple not everybody has the combination of uh, Microsoft operating system and Falcon CrowdStrike. There are so many other solutions out there. So it basically is only those two combinations that are being that have been impacted across the board. Awesome. So Mac computers are not impacted. Uh, another operating system called Linux are not impacted. So this is, seems to be focused on Windows with Falcon um, basically uh, product from uh, from CrowdStrike. Strike. Awesome. Well, doctor, thank you so much for your time. This has been my pleasure. It's always a pleasure talking with you. If there's anything you need, um, you know, let me know. And there's so much information that's going to be out there. So just, you know, everyone should sit tight 
and have the expert come up with a solution. I'm sure they will come up with a solution relatively quick, knowing the importance of this particular problem. 